Hello, my name is Mark Stringer. Uh, last week, I gave a talk about uh, the difference between value streams and value swamps. And there was one thing about um, what I talked about last week that I just wanted to go back and emphasize and talk about in more detail. So last week, we talked about uh, value streams and value swamps. Um, one of the crucial things um, about a value stream is that value streams work for understood product, understood products. So if you know what your product is, you know what the next step um, you can do with that product is to add more value. Uh, the point that I made last week is that if you've got a value swamp, that's because you're developing a new product. The values are lying around all over the place and you need to actually do work to connect the values together and then to create a value stream. So this is the point that I want to make uh, this week. Your project, your software development project, needs to be delivering some value to some users. Otherwise, it's doomed. So this is a question that you should always be asking yourself about your project. Who are the users and what value are we delivering to them? So I'm going to talk about an example now, which is a document um, management project that I did um, five, six years ago. I'm going to be deliberately vague about the organization that um, I did it with. It was an organization that dealt with a lot of doc documents. And at that point, those documents were physical documents. They were paper documents. And it had branches all over the country. And each branch had an administrator who was responsible for managing those documents and providing access to those documents. Now, Using an agile approach, we managed to create some kind of initial demonstrator, some initial working software um, for this project. And um, this initial demonstrator wasn't great. It had a bunch of problems. I've kind of represented some of the problems here that we had. We had some spelling mistakes, which was particularly galling for the kind of people who are administrators of documents. And sometimes when we press this, document, uh, this, this button um, for the documents, Sometimes we got to see the document and sometimes we got errors. And to get to that point where we had an initial demonstrator that allowed us to uh, sometimes view documents, it had cost about 200,000 pounds. So there was some kind of concern inside the organization that was paying for this project that maybe this wasn't going so well, this wasn't uh, going to be a successful project. But the interesting thing is that the, uh, the lady who was a product owner on this project had been one of the administrators um, working in this organization. She'd been one of the administrators. And with this kind of barely functioning demonstrator that we had, she um, set out on the road and went and went to talk to all of her fellow administrators. So she talked to these people and she showed them what we had, the working software that, that we had. And she was able to hand wave past um, any kind of defects and also kind of listen to them and figure out from them really what it was they wanted this thing to do. What were the most important things that they needed this thing to do? And the interesting thing about that dynamic, about having somebody go out and talk to the people who are actually going to use the product in their own language was that it created this thing which in lean and agile is known as pull. So this is rather than the organization that's generating a product, creating energy to push it out of the organization. This is people who are outside of the organization wanting to pull the product out of the organization. This is something that's talked about a lot in terms of um, Toyota and lean and car manufacturer that we talked about last week. But this is, this is customers wanting the thing, customers wanting value that you can give them. And the interesting thing is that from that point, that project, project kind of felt like it was on rails, not straight rails. There were lots of ups and downs, there were lots of twists and turns, but there was this feeling that we knew where we were going next with a, with a project. We knew where we were being pulled by the people who really wanted this, this product. So this is the thing that I'm trying to say that I wanted to pull out from last week, that the way, what you're doing when you're in exploring this value swamp is you're trying to find some value that you can provide to some people. And the work that you're doing with the software development is taking that value and connecting it with some people. 
And the thing is that if you can do that, then you can to some degree bypass or de-emphasize the things that people think are the most important things about project management. So it's not so not so important to deliver everything on a feature list. In fact, once you have pull from outside, then that dictates and reinforms the feature list. It's not so important about deadlines because once you know what people want, you get a much better idea of when things can be delivered and when things can things can be delivered late as long as they're the right things. It kind of de-emphasizes um, deadlines. Money, the nature of money and its relationship to the product changes. Once you have an idea of what its value is to users, that might be in terms of how much they want to pay for it, if it's a commercial product. It might be that in some other kind of product projects or government projects or other kinds of um, projects inside an organization, that the value isn't money. But if the people who are generating the project start to hear that there are people outside the project who really want it, that changes the relationship with money. It also changes the relationship with police of various kinds inside your organization. So project inside and outside. So um, project police, people who like want to check the security of things, who want to check standards on things, various kinds of non-functional requirements, um, various kinds of outside uh, regulating bodies. It's not saying that it completely brushes that away, but it changes the relationship with, with those kinds of people if you have a product that people want. So in conclusion, this is what I'm saying. Find somebody who understands your users. Now in the example that I've given, the person that we had who understood the users was somebody who'd been one of those users. It might be that in other projects, that's not the case. And you have to actually do some user research. You have to do some research as somebody who doesn't understand users to understand them. Another thing that you can do is you can go and find users who will act as advocates and champions for your for your product. That's another thing that you can do. Once you've done that, once you've started to understand the users and what you, they want, then you need to do some work to provide some software that can give those users what they want. And if you can do that, then you change the, val the balance of the project. My name's Mark Stringer. That's my email address. I'm currently working with a company called Marvel Consulting. Um, I'd be interested to talk to you. I'm sure they'd be interested to talk to you. Thanks very much.